Ever since the first ship set sail, sailors and fishermen have reported sightings of sea monsters. They were popular staples of medieval maps in an age where most ocean animals were unknown, and they continue to be sighted today. There's of course the famous Nessie from Scotland, there's Caddy from the Pacific coast of North America, Chessie from the Chesapeake Bay, and Champ from Lake Champlain, among others. The New England coast in particular has been a hotspot for sea serpent sightings at least as far back as 1639, when a fisherman in Gloucester, Massachusetts reported sighting a serpent with a turtle-like head and horns. In this same area in the years between 1817 and 1819, hundreds of people saw a similar monster. There's even a report of a group of over 200 people who watched it for three hours. In the years after the flurry of sightings, more people would sporadically come forward with stories of similar monsters and giant snakes in the Atlantic waters. But it wasn't until 1937 that one particular sighting would become global news. It all started in August, when a fisherman named Bill Manville told the local newspaper that he had spotted a 100-foot-long green monster with red eyes the size of dinner plates while out at sea. The newspaper published his story, but people had a hard time believing it until the next day, when another fisherman named Gilbert Manter said he spotted the creature while fishing for bluefish off Smith's Point. He said it looked like a cross between a snake and a whale, and that its head was bigger than its neck. He estimated it could have been around 120 feet long. The next morning, Manter and his friend Ed Crocker headed to Madiquette Beach in the hopes of spotting the serpent again. They didn't find the monster, but they did find its footprints, which measured 66 inches long and 45 inches wide. The photos were widely circulated in newspapers. Scientists who viewed them were highly skeptical, but the story nonetheless captured the public's imagination, if only as a source of entertainment. But imagine everyone's surprise when a few days later, a sea serpent washed ashore. It was 120 feet long, with teeth as long as a man's arm and a forked tongue. It also happened to be an inflatable balloon. The whole thing was revealed to be a hoax orchestrated by puppeteer Tony Sarg, who was the man responsible for the giant balloon characters in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. He was also a gifted animator and illustrator, so it's not hard to imagine how something so bizarre could have come from his imagination. He had worked side by side with the local newspaper to orchestrate the sightings. They used the hoax as a way to get Nantucket in the news and to promote his store, which was also located there, and was called Tony Sarg's Curiosity Shop. The sea serpent remained at the beach for several weeks, during which people came from all over the country to see it. A few months later, the monster made the journey to Manhattan, where it participated in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Of course, this wasn't the first time people had been fooled by tales of sea monsters. Even the famous Loch Ness Surgeon's photo was eventually revealed to be a hoax. Also, in 1934, a magazine from Berlin published photos claiming to show Nessie being captured. According to the article, it was captured by a fishing vessel and taken alive to an aircraft hangar in Edinburgh, where it was going to be put on display. The article turned out to be an April Fool's joke. In 1972, zoo workers from the UK claimed to have discovered the head of the Loch Ness Monster floating in the lake, but it turned out to simply be a dead, deformed seal that had been planted there as yet another April Fool's joke by one of their colleagues. These are only a couple of examples, but it just goes to show how popular these myths are and how desperate people are to believe them. Of course, there's also people who are sincere about their sightings, and it's hard to dismiss a phenomenon that seems ubiquitous across many different countries and cultures. I think many real sightings are simply misidentifications. People seeing eels or oar fish in the water and mistaking them for the necks and heads of sea monsters. Whale penises have even been thrown around as possible sources of misidentification. Which sounds like a joke, but if you actually look at the shape of them, it's not hard to see how they could be mistaken for sea serpents from far away. Of course, there's also those cases that involve multiple witnesses where there really isn't a satisfying explanation. Maybe some of the sightings are more than just cases of mistaken identity. After all, the ocean is huge. Who knows what could be swimming in the depths of it? If you like this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.